Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making an amazing wild mushroom bolognese with hand-cut pappardelle. So let's get started. First off, we're gonna make this rich and delicious sauce. We have a bit of prep work, and I wanna show you some of the steps. I chopped up two cups of onion, three carrots got peeled and chopped, just smaller pieces, similar to the onion, a little bit larger. We're gonna mince six cloves of garlic, but the main thing is the mushrooms, the beautiful mushrooms. We're gonna use 12 ounces of portobello mushrooms, but you don't just chuck them in or chop them up. You wanna remove the gills first, and to do that, just carefully use a spoon and scrape them off. We love the texture and taste of a portobello mushroom because it's like kind of meaty and substantial. It's just delicious. It has like a nice earthiness too. The gills don't have any of that and they're gonna kind of just dissolve into a paste uh, when you cook them. So we might as well remove them so we can have an amazing sauce. And this recipe just so happens to be from the winter chapter of my book. So if you have a copy, pull it on out and open up to page 120 so you can cook along. That's enough prep work for now. It's time to get your pot or Dutch oven nice and warm with two tablespoons of olive oil in there. Here we go. While that warms up, I'm gonna chop my portobello mushrooms as well as eight ounces of cremini or oyster mushrooms. And by the way, you can make this with any kind of mushroom really, like the cremini mushrooms, white button mushrooms. Um, the taste will be slightly different, but it'll still be delicious. So you don't have to stick exactly to the ingredients in this recipe you can play around with it. And like speaking of substitutions, one of the very first things we're gonna add into our pot is four slices of bacon that we gave a good chop to. If you don't like bacon, that's fine. You can skip it. This pasta will be delicious. I make it with and without all the time and no one's complaining. Pop that bacon on there. We're gonna get it nice and crispy. While that bacon's crisping up, continue chopping your mushrooms up just into nice little pieces. All right, now for the portobello mushroom. You can remove the stem completely if you want. I like removed most of the stems. Chop, 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 chop. So my bacon is nice and crisp. A lot of that fat's been rendered out and it's delicious. And right now I'm gonna add my two cups of diced onion, as well as the chopped carrot. So add that in. Mix that up. You're gonna stir like semi-frequently and you definitely don't want the bacon sitting all at the bottom because then it'll burn. Now that the onions and carrot are in it, I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. All right, mix that in. We will be adding more salt and pepper to taste later on, but it's always important to salt your food fairly early on in the baking process or cooking process. I'm mincing up six cloves of garlic. I gave them a smash to release the skins and some oil. And of course, I'm actually doing seven because I want as an extra, but add more garlic if you want. One of the questions I get maybe the most often is like pertaining to entertaining. It's like you're entertaining, you want to have people over, you want it to be fun for everybody, not just your guests. You deserve to have a good time too. This is actually best if you make it a day ahead of time. Pop it into the fridge and then just warm it up before serving. All those flavors just totally come together and concentrate. It tastes even better. And this way, on the day of, all you're doing is like warming up your sauce and mixing in the pasta. And I love making the pasta from scratch and having the hand cut pappardelle. I did that today off camera. I have a whole video on how to make pasta. You can click up here for that. But you can just use like pappardelle from the grocery store or like a nice brand of pasta and it's gonna be delicious either way. Okay. It's been a few minutes. My onions and carrots are nice and softened. They are not mushy though, so don't overcook things. That would be a disaster. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> all right, now we're gonna add all of these delicious mushrooms in it. It's gonna look like your pot's completely full, but you know mushrooms are basically like pure water, just like spinach and any green. Add all those in, along with your precious minced garlic. There we go. I saw this video and it was like, claiming how like the jarred minced garlic is like a chef's secret. And I was like, what <laughs> on earth? I couldn't have disagreed more strongly. Anyways, we're gonna stir this in, but it's time for another teaspoon of salt. So, let's get that in. And a little bit more pepper, half a teaspoon. 
a full teaspoon, a full teaspoon of pepper. It's consulting my book. We're gonna cook this, stirring often until the mushrooms really release a good amount of water and start to brown. This is on medium heat, but like depending on your cooktop, it's gonna be five minutes, maybe a little bit more, maybe a minute less. Just a couple minutes into this stirring situation, this has released so much water, it's really looking a lot more like cooked mushroomy, not quite brown yet, and the volume has decreased greatly. What we're gonna do now is add more flavors in, but we'll still be simmering and simmering and simmering to really concentrate those flavors and let them mix, mix and melt together. The mushrooms have just started to brown, so it's time to add some tomato paste. Oh my gosh, tomato paste is basically a superfood, but it's super delicious too. I want nine ounces of tomato paste. That's two 4.5 ounce cans. Stir this in now, and we're going to cook this until it's fragrant. It's, you'll really smell the tomato paste. It's such a concentrated, wonderful flavor. You're also stirring to coat, so you really want everything well coated in this tomato paste. It's like a protective, delicious, lycopene-rich barrier. Mmm, lycopene. You're gonna stir this over heat for about a minute until it caramelizes and becomes super fragrant, at which point it's time for a cup of wine. If you don't wanna use wine in this, totally skip it, just use an extra cup of chicken stock. It's gonna be fine. But if you do wanna use it, the wine gives you like a wonderful depth of flavor and just kind of, those tannins are working some magic. Let's add that wine in. All right. Wines in, one cup of chicken broth. And like I said earlier, you could just use two cups of chicken broth, and if you're making this as a vegetarian dish, veggie broth will work too, or veggie stock. All right, use your wooden spoon to really like scrape the bottom of your pot. Chances are you have some delicious brown caramelized pieces at the bottom, so you just wanna really mix those in. Pretty quickly this comes to a simmer, you're gonna see those big bubbles come up, right? And now it's time to reduce to low and just let this simmer uncovered for about an hour. You can come by every so often, just give it a stir, it's not a big deal. It's gonna concentrate those flavors, become just really nice and thick so it coats that pasta. We'll be right back with the magic of editing. My pasta finished simmering and I'm just finishing the final rollout of my fresh pasta dough. This is gonna hang out for a minute and then we're gonna give it a cut and it's time to like assemble this and make some magic happen. Look at that, gorgeous. My pasta's all rolled out. The sauce finished simmering. You might be able to see it's like nice and thick now. We're gonna thin it out with some magical things. And I have a big pot of water boiling with about a tablespoon or so of water. It's so important to salt your water when you're making pasta. Otherwise it's bland and sad. All right, now we're gonna cut our popper dough. All you have to do is give it a chop and try and keep it somewhat consistent. I like thick, luxurious ribbons. There we go, just like that. Ooh, so long. <laughs> it's the longest pasta in the world. All right, my last one is all cut. And now we're gonna add this into our boiling water. If you're using fresh pasta, it's four to six minutes. If you're using dried pasta, just follow your package's instructions. This pasta cooks in no time. So right before it's ready, we're gonna stir in about a third of a cup of cream. This will loosen the sauce up and really just kind of like open the flavors. Chances are this is gonna be really thick still. And if you wanna loosen it out, just make sure to reserve some of the pasta water. Pasta water has starch in it. So it has that wonderful like velvety texture and it's great for waking a sauce back up. Okay, oh, oh so the pasta's done. Transfer it over into the sauce. Wow, that looks gorgeous, but it did not stick the landing. <laughs> okay, there's a reason for this though. I'm transferring the pasta directly over instead of draining the water out. One, because I want to keep the pasta water. Two, when you do this, you're bringing a little bit of the water along for the ride and that's helping to loosen up the sauce. So it's doing two jobs at once. Stir the sauce and popperdell together so everything is lovely and coated. If it looks perfect right now, add the pasta water in because the pasta is th still thirsty. 
it's gonna soak up some of the liquid. So just go for a slightly more slack sauce. Finish the pasta off with some freshly shaved Parmesan and a sprinkle of parsley and you're ready to enjoy. That is so wonderful. It's rich, it's hearty, it's comforting with this like lovely earthy tomatoey flavor. It's so complex too. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe from my book and if you like this video, check out my pasta playlist.